Hello and welcome to the introduction of the new version 0.2 of the time series extension. My name is Fabian Temmer and I will guide you now through the new features provided by the update. Version 0.21 of the extension was already released two weeks ago. The recent update to 0.22 went live on Tuesday. This new version of the extension focuses mainly on different types of windowing in time series and five new operators are added to the time series extension folder in the operator uh, tree and I will now shortly introduce them and then explain their functionality in more details after that. So first we have the new group features which have the new operator extract aggregates, then there's a new operator replace missing values in series, then there's a new operator forecast validation and the new group windowing with the two operators windowing and process windows. Besides these new operators, we have also a new data set in the time series extension samples folder, which is automatically added to your repository panel when you install the extension. So there's a new data set. So there are six data sets which uh, were already in the version 0.1 and there is the new prices of gas station. These contains the prices of gas at the gas station next to the Dortmund office of a favorite miner for roughly a year. Of data. So in addition to the new data set we have also added three new template processes. There are the create model for gas prices, the forecast validation of Arima model for Lake Huron and the investigate gas prices data template process added as new processes. Uh, I will use them to now demonstrate the usage and the functionality of the new operators in the extension and I will start with the create model for gas prices template process. So as you see here, the process already uses the new data set, prices of the gas station, and I will insert here a breakpoint so that we can have a look into the data, how the data looks like. So I run the process and we see here that we have data starting at the March, 3rd of March in 2017 and we see it's hourly uh, data and we can scroll down and see we have the gas prices in euro times 1000 and it's until April of 2018. Uh, in total we have roughly a little bit below 10,000 examples and we can also have a look in the time series itself going to the chart panel and looking into the series chart and we see we have over the years some seasonality in the gas price and we can also zoom in into a smaller range and we see that there's also need to be also a daily structure in the gas prices. So this is the new data set. So we go back now to the design view and see and use it next time the new windowing operator. So this windowing operator is similar to the one from the old value series extension but with enhanced functionality. So we see here this windowing operator converts the time series data set into a windowed example set with the window values as new attributes. Uh, we see uh, soon how this looks like. So we can here see that we specify the attribute which holds the time series. We specify also the window size. So 48 uh, values will be in one window. So we have the data of the last 48 hours plus two days. Uh, in addition, we can also create a horizon. Uh, in this case, we set it to a horizon width of one. So we exactly have one uh, value we want to forecast with a step size or offset of 23. So this is in total then 24, the, the gas price in 24 hours in the future. Um, and we set the step size to 24 so that the next window starts at a day later. So I will resume the process now so that we can have a look uh, how the converting from the time series to the windowed example set works. So we see here again the attribute. So this is the gas price 47 hours uh, in the past, 46 hours and so on. This goes until the gas current gas price for the actual window. And then we see we have the attribute gas price 24 hours in the future, which is the horizon. 
which is automatically set to be a label attribute. We can see this in the statistic view that this is a label. Um, and there is another attribute added, which is called last date and window. This is due to the fact that we specified the initial attribute. I will go back now to the design view to show you this. So you see here, we have uh, specified that there's another attribute, which is called date, which is the indice attribute and the windowing automa uh, auto operator automatically adds then another attribute with the last indice value. So in this case, the last date in the window so that we have directly an uh, index attribute also in the windowed example set. So what we have now is something which we already know from machine learning problems. We have attributes, we have a label and we have an example set and we could now use uh, this to train a model to predict the gas price in 24 hours. And this is also exactly what is happening in the next step in the uh, template process. So we use a cross-validation operator and inside this cross-validation operator, we build in this case a gradient booster trees. We could use any other machine learning model we want to. Then we apply the model and uh, calculate the performance to evaluate how good the model is. So I will resume the process now. So <clears throat> this is how we convert a time series problem into a uh, machine learning problem. So in our case, we have a root mean squared error of roughly 30 or a relative error of a little bit more than 1%. So this is a quite nice model to forecast and we can also store the model and use it in a forecasting for new values. So to sum up, the windowing operator converts a time series problem or forecast problem into a machine learning problem where we can use then our uh, already known set of tools to train, model, to optimize it and so on. Next, maybe we don't want to have a machine learning model, but we want to investigate the data, the time series a little bit more. So I go now to the investigate gas price data template process, which is also new. So this process is also used the new data set um, and it uses the new process windows operator. This operator also performs the same windowing as the windowing operator. So it divides the time series into different windows. In this case, we have a window size of 24. So one window is one day. As the parameter no overlapping windows is selected, the step size is adjusted in a way that no windows overlaps. The process windows operator, as you can see, is a subprocess operator, so we can go inside. The operator loops over the windows and performs the inner subprocess on each window. The windowed values are provided at these input ports and we can do anything with them. Any of our operators which are in the product. So in this case, we use the extract aggregates operator, the new operator to calculate some standard features of the time series, or in this case of the actual window. So we see here, we can select several standard features. In our case, uh, we selected mean, min, max, and standard deviation. And we add also the time series name to the feature name. The original valued values, uh, <laughs> windowed values, are then provided to the differentiation operator, which was already in the version 0.1 of the time series extension. It calculates the differentiated gas prices and we use another extract aggregate operator to calculate the features of the differentiated gas prices. Then we append both extracted feature sets together and provide it to the result output port. And when I go back now one up, we collect all the different results of the different windows and append them together. So I will now run the process to have a look how the results looks like. So we see here that we have the mean, min, max standard deviation of the original gas price and of the differentiated gas price. As we can see, there's also again this last date in window added. This is due to the fact that we have selected the parameter add last index and window attribute. And when the parameter is selected, every time an example set is connected to an output port in the process windows operators, 
an attribute with the last index value in the window is added automatically here. So you could extract this also by your hand in the sub process, but here this is a convenient way to automatically edit this attribute in the data. So I go back now to the results view. So we have now the extracted features and the last date in window attribute, so we can investigate the data. So for example, we can have a look into the mean gas price over the year. So we see here the mean daily, uh, the daily mean of the gas price and its seasonality. And we could also have a look into the differentiated gas price, the mean of it, and we can see that there seems to be different phases of the differentiated gas price. So one phase with basically no change, of zero, uh, zero differentiation, and some uh, phases with a, a roughly constant decrease. Uh, we can also add horizon attributes in the process window operator. So we can select here, create horizon. Um, the behavior is rather similar to the one for the last index and window attribute. So I will show you now how this looks like. So we can create an horizon. In this case, I want, just want to have a horizon with a one and horizon offset of zero. And when I run it, we can see there's another attribute added, which is again the plus one horizon attribute, so one in the future, uh, which is ultimately set to um, be a label attribute. And this is the same way, so every time an example set is connected at the output port, this horizon attribute is created. So what we hear here again is also something which we know from machine learning problems. So we have again features and a label, so we could also train a machine learning model on this using the features of the windows. So the process windows operator is similar to the already existing loop operators. So it loops over the uh, different uh, windows and can also be executed, executed in parallel. So if the license permits, the processing of the different windows of the time series can be performed in parallel. The last new template process is the forecast validation of ARIMA model for Lake Huron process. So this uses the new forecast validation operator to validate the performance of a forecast model for the Lake Huron data set. This data set was already added in version 0.1. The forecast validation operator looks similar to the cross validation operator but instead of specifying the number of folds you want to use to validate your model, we specify again the already known window parameters, which we know from the process windows and windowing operator. The forecast validation operator performs this windowing and again, and generates training windows and testing windows. And these testing windows contain the horizon values. We see the operators also subprocess operator, so we can go in. So we have here the training subprocess and the testing subprocess, similar to the cross validation operator. In the training subprocess, the values of the training window are provided at the training input port. We will have a short look how this looks. So we have uh, 20 values, which is our training window, and we have the time series value as well as the indice values. So I go back to the design. So we can use now this training window to train a forecast model. Currently only the ARIMA model is supported. So we train the ARIMA model with the ARIMA trainer and provide the model to the model port. Now we go over to the testing subprocess. So this is a bit different to the cross validation operator. Here, can we, here we can directly use the forecast model to predict the values of the test window. The size of the test window is defined by the parameter horizon width of the forecast validation operator. So the operator uses the provided forecast model from the training phase um, to predict the models of the test window, uh, the values of the test window. Uh, the model itself is only provided for convenience and apply model operator is not necessary. We will have a look how, uh, how this looks like. 
So here we have the original values of the testing window, which is the horizon. And we have the forecasted values predicted by the forecast model. In addition, the position of the forecast and again, the last index in the training window is added to the set test set. This data can now be used to directly calculate the performance of the prediction because we have here, as we see here, a label attribute and a prediction attribute. So I go back. So in our template process, we directly do this by using the performance operator and calculate the performance of the prediction. Uh, in the next iteration, the training window and the test window is moved by the step size, which is in this case five. A uh, new forecast model is trained and tested again. So I remove now the breakpoints so that I can resume the whole validation process. And we see we get the results of the validation. So read root mean squared error of 1.1 roughly. And we get the test set, which we see contains the different test sets of all validations of all training windows. And we get uh, the model and oh, there's also difference to the cross validation operator here. This model provided by the forecast validation operator is always the model which was trained at last because you then can apply it directly to the next values which will be in the future, which you don't have true values yet. Uh, the forecast validation operator can also be executed in parallel. This is new in the update 0.22. So if you have the corresponding license, you can speed up the validation of the forecast models further. So these are the three new template processes. They demonstrate how to use windowing with the new operators in the time series extension. Of course, there are way more complex setups, but these new operators should enable you to perform also complex time series tasks fast and simple. Four of the five new operators are used in the template processes. The remaining one is replace missing values for series. I will use now the tutorial process to demonstrate its usage. So the replace missing values operator replace miss missing values by next value or by the previous value or by the average of the neighboring values or by the linear interpolation of the neighbors or, or, or by a constant value. Uh, the linear interpolation also takes into account non-equidistance indices. Um, this tutorial process uses a Lake-Huron data set uh, and generates just randomly some missing values. So we we'll insert a breakpoint here to have a look. So I have created here now a data, an attribute with data with missing values just just have some randomly created missing values in it. And when I resume the process, we see we have uh, used two different replace missing values operators by two different methods. So here the next value method, which just uses the next value for the replacement of the missing values uh, and here by linear interpolation. So this was the introduction of the new version 0.22 of the time series extension. It mainly focuses on the concept of windowing and enables you to use this in your daily data science work. Thank you for your attention and feel free to also provide feedback in the RapidMiner community.